All right then, welcome back everyone. Let's solve this question. Mixor mix up. Now this is a beautiful question based on bit masks. I really enjoyed solving it. So I'll quickly summarize the question for you. We are given two integers, a and b. A is greater than zero. It is important, and b is greater than equals to zero. So a is a uh, positive, and b is non-negative. And what we want is a uh, we want a uh, array of non-negative integers that is a uh, value greater than equals to zero with the max value equal to a and zor value equal to b. So what is zor value? A zor value is simply bitwise zor of all the elements of array. Okay. And what is this max? This max stands for minimum excluded. I guess we've already seen it once or twice before. What is minimum excluded? Is a uh, it is a minimum non-negative integer that does not belong to the array. So max is defined on a set. It is a mathematical operation. It is defined on a set such that uh, max of an set is equal to minimum non-negative integer that does not belong to the array. So the question is pretty simple. Uh, we are given two integers here, a and b. So both are uh, like this a is positive and this b is uh, non-negative. And what we want to spit is uh, we want to output the one positive integer. What is that positive integer? It is length of shortest array with the max value equal to a and zor value equal to b. That is the minimum excluded of this array. That is the smallest non-negative integer, not part of this array is a and zor. That is bitwise zor of all the elements of this array is equal to b. Simple question, right? So here is the question summary. You are given two integers. Uh, both are non-negative, but this guy is greater than zero. You want to find the length of shortest array, right? So this is what you are after, uh, such that max is a and zor of uh, arr is b. Now, if you try to satisfy both conditions at the same time, uh, your mind will be a cluster f. <laughs> but you should not try to do that. So let's uh, approach one condition at a time, right? So zor or max, uh, which one would you like to choose? Uh, now the zor. Uh, like involves a lot of uh, bitwise operations and that, right? So it might look a bit difficult to start with. So what we can do is uh, maybe we can look at this uh, max uh, max condition. Can we satisfy this first? A uh, max uh, it stands for minimum excluded. That is, uh, you want an array such that the smallest non-negative integer, not part of it, is a. So smallest non-negative integer, not part of it, is a. So what does that mean in other words is you must need values from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on, a minus 2, a minus 1, right? You need at least these values. These elements are the must, right? Because the minimum excluded value of this array, uh, minimum excluded value of this array is a. If the smallest possible non-negative integer not part of this array has to be a you must have these elements from 0 1 2 3 till a minus 1 because if you miss any one of them any one of them uh, the max will become that element itself right so if you miss 0 here the max of this array will become 0 if you miss a minus 2 then max will become a minus 2 so these elements are must you cannot afford to not have any of these so what does this tell you what does this tell you this tells you one thing that uh, length of your answer is at least how many elements are there here 0 to a minus 1 it is at least a right so that's one thing okay so you need at least a element so that's a good observation here so let me uh, call this array as a base array my base array so you need to have at least these many elements to satisfy uh, this condition max condition okay um that's a good starting point uh, now let's move the next condition then um zor right so you know for the fact that you need at least these elements okay now wouldn't it be nice uh, if zor of these element itself turned out to be b right so if we lived in the ideal world uh, the zor of base let me just call it as x let just call this zor of base uh, to be x okay in a very ideal world what could happen is uh, this x zor of this array itself can be b right so I'm just thinking about one case here. If this x turns out to be b, then it's a very good thing because now uh, you have an array whose max value is a and its or value is b. So your answer will be your answer uh, will be simply length of this base array, which is actually a, right? So your length of arr will be equal to length of base, which is actually equal to a, right? Fine. So this makes sense. What next? Uh, but it may not be the case, right? So one thing is you need at least these elements. And by using just these elements, if the zor turned out to be 
B, your job is done. This is the, you can say, shortest possible array you need, right? Okay, but what if it is not equal to B? Let's see that case as well, right? So this is one case and the other case can be, uh, it is not equal to B, right? So if it is not equal to B, then what? Uh, remember, we are trying to satisfy the ZOR condition here, right? So you should uh, be very thorough with the fundamental properties of ZOR. If you have forgot, I'll repeat it here. See, uh, the properties of ZOR uh, are like this. XOR0 is simply X. XOR1 is X bar. So X is a bit here. So if it is a uh, zeros or zero will be zero, uh, ones or zero will be one. So that's what it is. And similarly, and what other property that is very interesting is um, if you have a number, if you zor it with it itself, it becomes zero. That's very important property. Frankly, this property is what uh, should uh, ring something in your head. If I zor a number with itself, it becomes zero. So if x is not equals to b, and you know that if you zor a number with itself, it becomes zero. Okay, so right now the zor of this base array, that is the elements that you must have, uh, is giving me x. Okay, my aim is uh, to reach b. Okay, I have x. I want to reach b. Can I destroy this x somehow? Right. See, when you are in this here, when you are here, you need to add elements. That's for sure, right? So if x is not equals to b, then you must add elements. That is for sure. So you have x now, the current zor. You want to reach b. Is there a way by adding an element you can destroy this x? Think about it. If you add x or b to this array, this element, what will happen? What will happen? Now if you perform a zor of all the elements, this x x will lead itself and you will have 0. 0 or b is simply b. Right? So even if you have an element x, you zor it with itself, it stays itself. What I just uh, told you is, currently the zor of uh, the array is x. If I just have one more element x or b, and now that I perform zor, now after performing zor, now your zor will become b, right? So this makes sense, right? So this seems to be working. So your answer, you will write it, will be uh, simply length of base plus one, that is a plus one. But wait uh, for some time, uh, okay, adding this element is making sense. So adding this element is making sure that your zor is b, okay, but you have one more condition to satisfy, which is max should be a. Can adding this element mess up my max value? When can it mess up my max value? Adding this guy can mess up my max value only if this guy is equal to a, right? Because if this guy is equal to a and you are trying to add that guy here, of course, now your minimum excluded value is something which is not a, right? It will be greater than a. It will be plus one here. So, okay, uh, this makes sense. Uh, here, there are again two cases here. So, what two cases we have here is, is XOR B equal to a or is XOR B not equal to a? If it is not equal to a, in this case, your answer is simply length of base plus one, right? What is this plus one? Uh, this plus one actually sounds for x or b. Just add this guy. So now your zor has become b and uh, max value is still a. Max value is still a. Whatever this value is, this value can lie here or maybe greater than a, but it is definitely not a. That we know for the sure. So that's why we can add this one guy. So this is your answer is simply length of base that is a plus one. But what if it is equal to a? If it is equal to a, of course you cannot get rid by adding just one element because that one element has to be x or b, but we cannot add one element. If you cannot add one element, can you add two elements, right? So here, if you are here, you know for the fact you have to add, your answer is length of base, at least this, right? At least this. Now, can you make sure that it becomes exactly this? Can you add just two elements? So if I'm not able to add x or b to it, um, what can I add? Think about it. Uh, what can I add here? You can add 1 XOR X or B and 1. Okay. So uh, this comes from little bit experience that what we just did is, you know for the fact that 1 is going to mess up uh, a bit, right? So when you have this thing and you XOR it with 1, you know it is going to mess up at least one bit, right? 
If the zeroth bit is zero, it's gonna turn it to one. If the zeroth bit is one, it's gonna turn it to zero. So you know for the fact if you zor this guy with one, it's gonna mess up at least one bit. So now uh, this value is not a for the fact. So you're not adding a a to your array, and you are adding one because of course you have to get anyway uh, b back, right? So what you are doing is uh, now effectively what will happen is when these two zor happens, this one will cancel out each other. In this xor b, this x will be cancelled out by the initial zor, right? So okay. So what just happened is uh, right now the zor was x. You added two more elements. X or B or one. A or is a commutative associative, so you can change the order; doesn't really matter. And you added one, so this X will eat he, he, eat this X. This one will eat this one, but you will have remain with B. The minimum excluded still stays A because uh, you are not adding A to it. And how do we ensure we are not adding A to it? You XOR this guy with one because when you XOR this, one definitely messes up a bit. You know for the fact. So one is going to mess up a bit. And but of course you need to cancel this one out, so we'll add one to it. So we are adding one and some guy which is not a, so max still remains a. But now one is eaten here, and this x is eaten here, so now your zor is b. So that is the question for you. So here's the pseudo code. Then, if zor of the base array is equal to b, your answer is simply a, right? Because just bare minimum element suffice. If it is not equal to b, we have to consider two cases. Does xor b equal to a? If it is equal to a, we need to add two elements. These two, right? But if it is not equal to a, we can just get away by adding one element. That's uh, that's how it is. So yeah, uh, that's that for this question. And let's just now quickly implement it. Okay, guys. So let's just implement a solution then. First things first. Uh, if you look at the constraints, um, a, b are less than equals to three, five, and test cases are less than equals to five, b, four. And what we want to effectively do is we want to calculate the zor of our base array, right? Which contains elements from zero to e minus one. So if you run a loop for that, uh, it's not going to work out because now the total time complexity will be what five e four into three five. So it will be somewhere around uh, fifteen. Like it will be one e ten something order of one e ten, and it won't work here uh, because you cannot uh, have one e ten number of iterations. You can have some one e seven or one e eight number of iterations only, right? So we need a smarter way uh, to calculate zor for every test case, right? So there are two approaches to this. Uh, first thing is there is a constant time operation using which you can calculate zor of first and natural numbers. So from one to a minus one, you can calculate a zor, and any which way uh, something zor with zero stays same. So there is a constant time operation for that. Um, so that's one way. Or the other way is uh, you can pre-compute the zors first. Like if you pre-compute the zors beforehand. Since you know your value is not going beyond 3e5, the worst possible case, the zors that you'll have to compute will be from 1 till 3e5 minus 1, right? Because the worst possible case, your base array will be 0 till a minus 1. So worst case will be 3e5 minus 1. So you can pre-compute all the zors, and then uh, you can get uh, zors for each iteration in just constant time, right? So that will be good. So that in that case, total time complexity will be what? It will be 3e5 plus uh, whatever the time complexity is there uh, for our logic, which will be nothing but a constant time operation, right? So your total time complexity will be 3, 5 plus the time complexity of number of test cases. So that will work very well. So let's just do it, right? So let's try to pre-compute the ZORs first. So I'll create a vector here of ZORs. And uh, what size should I take? The size should be 3, uh, 3E5, okay, 3, 5. And just for safety, I'll calculate some more values here. Okay, 10 more values. It doesn't hurt, right? I'm just being safe. So let's just calculate uh, all these ORs then. So the ZORs array is going to work like this. So ZORs of 0 is 0 because ZOR of 0 is 0. Now ZOR of i will hold a ZOR of elements from 0 till i. I'll run a loop from i equals to 1. i equals to 1. i less than length of ZORs. Okay, I'll go through all the elements. i plus plus. And uh, zors of i will be nothing but zors of i minus 1, zor i. Right? Because zors of i holds a, a zor, like it's a running zor from 0 till i. That is the main idea. So I've pre computed the zors. So this is a pretty fundamental thing. We have done a lot of times in 800 and 900 questions. So that's that. Now I have zors calculated. First things first, uh, I'll calculate the base zor, right? So what is the zor of my base array? It will be zors of what? 
0 till a minus 1. So, zor of a minus 1, right? The base area is 0 till a minus 1, right? And uh, now you know that the max value is a. Now, what do you need to check? You need to check whether this x is equal equal to b. Uh, what is b? The zor, right? The required zor we have. If it is the case, then our answer is simply a, right? So, it is the length of base area, basically. Else, uh, we have two cases, right? So, I'll just write here. The two cases, if this x or b, x or b is not equal to a, if it is not equal to a, then your answer will be simply a plus one. Just add one element, what element? x or b, right? Else, you will have to add two elements, one x or b, x or x and one. So in this case, your answer will be a plus two followed by a new line, right? So that's that. So what is the time complexity here? The time complexity will be a uh, time complexity of pre-computing, which is three, five, something, and then uh, for each test cases, uh, this is just a, this is just a constant time operation, so order of one, so three e five plus five e four, so some order of five, order of ten power five operations. This is pretty good. This should work. Another way to approach this would be uh, to use a constant time operation to calculate ZOR of elements from zero till a minus one. So that I'll link a blog. You can read it uh, because I don't think I'll add any value more than just showing you the formula for it and I don't want to waste your time for it. You can just read it and I guess I won't be able to submit the solution right now because I guess there's some constant contest evaluation going on. So yeah, that's that for this video. I'll see you in the next one.